Annas Histema tells us that the authority of the spiritual weapons granted to us, we can withstand evil forces. So God is able to help us to withstand uh, wicked forces. We're going to share a few more things. But tonight, um, it's really upon my heart, um, after reading to you um, last Sunday about the events of the pastor that made statements really critical against the Bible, and they are now planning to build churches for Islamic people and not build Christian churches. They plan to have a some kind of raising funds to do this. And one pastor actually changed his name to his uh, Islamic name and is really no longer a Christian. You can't, you can't be two different things at the same time. You either serve the Lord or you're serving the devil. And tonight I want to spend a little time explaining to you that you, everyone on the planet is submitted to some spirit. Everybody yields to a spirit, either a good one or a bad one. It doesn't matter who you are. You cannot avoid it. You're, you're either submitting to God or you're submitting to the devil. You're either submitting to the to the will of God and the purposes of God, or you're submitting to the devil and his purposes. And as we pray, we are called to be intercessors, and without us uh, learning to resist the devil, we will never be able to get where we need to be. We are coming up on an election, and there are many people out there, and we need to pray that God will bind the enemy forces. We're not fighting against people, but we are fighting against wrong ideas, wrong philosophies, wrong things that are not pleasing to God. And we need to bind the devil and resist the devil so those things cannot take precedence over the Spirit of God. Can I get a witness? Amen. We need to pray on the behind the scenes because we're not trying to defeat people. We're trying to defeat the principalities and powers that's out there. The Bible says that we have power over all devils and to cure diseases. We have power to stop these things that they cannot influence, especially the church. We need somebody to take the responsibility to intercede and bind the devil. Um, you're awful quiet tonight, but it's all right. We need to understand we have opposition tonight against the devil. Our battle isn't with people. It's against principalities and powers. And here it tells us that we are able to withstand the enemy's forces. We must understand we live in a spiritual world, and God is intending for the church to take his place, or we want to call it her place, in the world today and stand up for the things that are right. Can I get a witness? Amen. We must stand up for what the truth represents. We cannot let the enemy, uh, amen, prevail. Greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. We must learn that we are here to resist the devil and to gain victory for God. Hello. Let me read you another passage of Scripture. This is spiritual warfare. Amen. Uh, faith's warfare. Paul admonishes us to put on the whole armor of God in order to stand against the forces of hell. It is clear that our warfare is not against physical forces, but against invisible powers who have clearly defined levels of authority in a real though invisible sphere of activity. Paul, however, not only warns us of a clearly defined structure in the invisible realm, he instructs us to take up the whole armor of God in order to maintain a battle stance against this unseen satanic structure. All of this armor is not just a passive protection 
in facing the enemy. It is to be used offensively against the, the satanic forces. Note Paul's final directive that we are to be praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Thus, prayer is not so much a weapon or even part of the armor as it is a means by which we engage the battle itself and the purpose for which we are armed. To put on the armor of God is to prepare for battle. Prayer is the battle itself with, with God's word being our chief weapon employed against Satan's own, or, or against Satan during our struggle. And so Paul is ministering to us about the fact that through the prayer that we pray, that is the warfare. That is what our warfare is, that through God's help and grace, even though there are forces out there, uh, the word, amen, is, is, is the stance that God gives us, but we have to use it as a weapon. So in our prayer time, that is the part of the battle. That's the part where we stand against the wiles of the devil. That's the part where we pull down strongholds and that we speak the word of God. And if we want to see our country change and we want to see better things happen in America this year, we better learn how to pray and bind the hand of the enemy and stop the behind-the-scenes forces that are influencing people. And I challenge you tonight, if you can tell me one thing that any of the candidates have said that's either scriptural or godly or comes from the Bible, I dare you to tell me if there is one word that they have used that proclaims that they are submissive to God in any way. And if the case is that they're not submissive to God, then we must bind their efforts. Hello. We must pray in the spirit realm. I wish somebody would join me tonight that we must stop the hand of the enemy from coming into America. And I don't care what people are saying or doing. We have power over the spirit that motivates them. We have power over their thoughts. We have power over what they're planning to do because greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. I don't care who's getting elected. I don't care what they're saying. The spirit that is behind this is subject to the name of Jesus. Jesus' name is above every name, and we can cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. We have power tonight, amen. We have ability tonight to gain victory, and we do not have to lay down and take it, amen but we can bind up the enemy and see this United States and even the world change if we'll intercede according to the will of God. Amen.